Good morning and welcome to our service. As you can see, we're back in church again and it's lovely to be here. But again, I have to remind you that we can't be open for Sunday services just at the moment. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've had a good week and I hope that you have been able to spend time with family and friends and perhaps take some time away from work and your everyday duties at this holiday time. Today's service will run as usual. Um, this week we have Evie reading the, the reading for us today and Charlie will be bringing us the prayers and Jen will be bringing us a reflection on that reading. So as we just pause for a moment, let us consider all the things that we've done this week, all the words we've said, the times that perhaps we've been aware that we haven't been quite as loving and careful as we could have been. And let's just bring those things before God as we join together in the confession. So let's just confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that them, they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now Evie will come and bring us our reading. Today's reading is from Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyro and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted and her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in this passage that Evie's just read for us, we see Jesus on his travels once again. And what at first glance appears to be a very different side of him. He meets this woman who's obviously in real anguish and she cries out to him about her demon-possessed daughter. And what does Jesus do? He ignores her. And then, to add insult to injury for the woman, the disciples urge Jesus to send her away. Where's their compassion for this woman and her daughter? Why do they allow some people to come near to Jesus and others they don't want anywhere near him? And why on earth does Jesus ignore her? It just seems so out of character for the loving man that we know. 
Well, I believe that this was another time of teaching for the disciples, for the Jews, and then, of course, for us now, today. So Jesus eventually stops ignoring this poor woman and tells her that he was sent only for the lost sheep of Israel. She, being a Canaanite woman, was not from the chosen race, the suggestion being, why should I help you? So is this actually what Jesus believed? Well, again, I suggest not. I believe that he was reflecting the thoughts of the Jews onto her in front of them. And this thought process carries on to the next part of the conversation. Jesus suggests that he shouldn't take food and maybe read into that blessings or healing power from the children and give it to the dogs. Well, this gives power to the children of Israel, the chosen ones, over this woman and her daughter, the dogs. How degrading to refer to her and her whole race, in fact, anyone who wasn't a Jew, as a dog. But this is exactly what the Jews felt at the time. They were the only ones for whom God sent his son. Therefore, Gentiles were as likely as dogs to receive any blessing from him. But this Canaanite woman wasn't about to give up quite so easily. She obviously saw something in Jesus and had a better grasp of who he was than those who were around him. Even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She was aware that she wasn't worthy of receiving anything from this man before her. She knew how she was seen by those around him. But yet she surrendered herself to Jesus, holding on to the hope that he could and would heal her daughter. A crumb. That was all that she wanted, all that she needed. She accepted who she was in the eyes of those around her and was happy to take the smallest crumb, the piece that those who had more than enough had discarded, the smallest piece of Jesus. So does that sound like any of the other parables we've heard and any stories you may remember? A mustard seed, the touch of Jesus' cloak, a look, a word. A crumb of faith was all that was needed for her daughter to be healed. And Jesus told her that she had great faith, all from a crumb that was under the master's table. Isn't this just an amazing bit of teaching? Jesus was reiterating that he had come for everyone, Jews and Gentiles. And actually many Jews missed out on the blessings of God because they rejected Jesus. And many, many more Gentiles were blessed and received salvation because they recognised, acknowledged and accepted who Jesus was. But he was also reminding everyone that you don't need huge amounts of faith. The smallest bit of faith in him is enough and you don't need to do anything to receive that faith or to receive him. You just say, yes, I know who you are and I accept you as my God and saviour. It really is that simple. Have you done that? Have you taken a crumb from beneath his table even though you know you are not worthy? If not, then today you can say yes to him and he will have compassion and mercy on you. He loves you now and he always will. So take that small step of faith and hold on to that crumb. And finally, who would have thought 
that a tiny crumb of faith is enough not only for you and me, but is enough to give hope to all the nations. The thing is what you do with it, what you do with that tiny crumb of faith and how that tiny crumb of faith impacts those around you. Amen. So let us now share together the words that all believers say, declaring our faith together through the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Welcome to prayer. Let's pray. God our Father, we come to you and ask you to help us find peace on earth. Peace between nations, peace between countries, peace between cultures and peace between religions. Please help us just to love and forgive each other as you love and forgive us. We pray for you to help us see and understand how precious our planet is, and how we need to nurture it back to its original glory that you created. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, thank you for keeping us safe during this difficult time, but please be there for anyone who has been affected by this awful virus. The individuals who have perished, please welcome them into heaven and comfort their families. Please give strength to individuals affected and still fighting off the disease. And all those who have survived, please let them see their blessings. For all the people who are working hard to help fight the virus, doctors, nurses, scientists, paramedics, hospital staff, care home staff, and anyone else who has given their all. Bless them, guide them, love and protect them, and watch over them as only you can. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Closer to home, Lord, please help our churches start to prepare for holding services in public again. Bless our church leaders with wisdom and guidance. As Green Life Church celebrates the appointment of our new priest in charge, please be with Reverend Charlie and her family as they prepare to say goodbye to their current parish. Their loss is truly our gain. Lord, hear us. 
Lord graciously hear us. Father, help our community of Green Life to work together and support one another to help rebuild our community. We welcome the continued support of everyone who helps with the charity Mary's Child, which has become a lifeline to so many people during the crisis. We appreciate the continued donations from our amazing community, which without we wouldn't be able to reach half the people that we've reached. Help us to show our gratitude to all the volunteers who are the backbone of the organisation. And all the work we do is in your name. I'd like to finish with the Franciscan Prayer of Community Obedience. We adore you, most holy Lord Jesus Christ, here in all your churches throughout this world. And we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Merciful Father, please accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As a Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
And so as we come to the end of our service today, thank you for joining us. Pray that you have a good week, that you do get some time to relax and spend time with family and friends away from your work. We pray that you have a blessed week and that you will watch out for the blessings of God around you. And remember the times that he is with you always. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>